everyone and welcome back to the vlog. My name is Claire Carl Michael. I'm a general practice nurse. If you don't already know, hello, welcome. Thank you for popping into my channel. And today's video is all about change management. Thank you so much to the person that quest requested this on my comments. This is an amazing vlog to do. Hadn't thought about this one and I'm all about change management. So this is a really good one to do. So thank you and hopefully this is going to be the one for you if you're looking to do change in the NHS, whether it's GP, hospitals, community, wherever you're working, not even NHS, just in general, if you want to create change somewhere, hopefully this is going to help you out. So firstly, why is change needed? Well, as you know, healthcare is constantly changing. Evidence is constantly updating. Research is constantly being done and updating and services just get better and better based on the evidence-based practice that we do. And this is a form of research, things that go well, things that don't go so well, and then things are molded and edited and changed in the NHS in healthcare to hopefully provide better outcomes for the patients and the colleagues. However, sometimes change isn't always welcomed. There are people out there that are really resistant to change and I think it's just because it's the fear and some of you might have heard those comments, oh we've always done it this way so this is the way we do it. They're so stuck in their ways, they don't want to change, they're comfortable but you know what? nothing grows when you're comfortable is when you step outside that comfort zone you make change happen you develop you grow personally you grow professionally and you just gotta go for it guys so yes this is why i think people are resistant to change they're scared they like it the way it is and that it's the fear of the unknown maybe who knows the next question is how to implement change uh, now, the thing is, there are definitely ways to do this. You can't just go in all guns blazing. I want to change this. This is going to work. This is going to do that. This is no, you're not going to get anywhere if you go in like that. Let me tell you now, that person is going to shut off, shut the door. Nope, not having it. That's it. So to implement change, there are different models that you can use and you can go by. It's a step-by-step -step structured process basically to make change happen. It's not going to be an overnight fix unless it's just something really, really simple like changing a routine or something like that. I don't know. Um, but there are models of change that you can use to help you with the process. And there are so many different models out there. So have a little research, look at the best one that's going to suit for what you want to change or whatever you want to do in practice. Have a look and see which one suits you. And one of the change models that I used previously in our uh, sort of end of year literature review, this was the Lewin's change model developed in 1951, which comes in three simple steps. The first one we're going to talk about is the unfreeze step or the unfreeze stage, which is all about identifying the need for this change. And not only that, but preparing the organisation, the people around you, your colleagues, management, all of that, preparing them for this type of change as well. And the key to developing this is show why change is needed. So look at what's going on. Think about the change that you want to create. Look at what's going wrong. What could be do done better? You have to show them basically that a change in a certain area is needed and back it up with evidence to show that it's needed. I'm backing it up with evidence so anything like poor outcomes for patients anything that, that's taken really really long to do and you think oh gosh there's a really quicker way to do this anything that's going to save them money in the long run is always a winner for change because it's always down to money and patient outcomes so as long as you can meet those targets you're on to a winner however you also need to incorporate the beliefs and the values of the trust that you're working at or the place that you're working at you have to incorporate that to meet the values meet the needs of the patients or the colleagues around you meet the beliefs of the system and just make it sell it basically not make it but sell it you need to sell it to people and then once you've done that and they've agreed okay yes this is something we can look at the second stage is implemented and that is the change stage and in this stage, this is where you're looking at what, how to change things. And there's going to be some sort of stability in this new change. It's all working out. Your colleagues are feeling confident about it. They're feeling much better about it. And change has happened. So in this stage, you want to develop new ways to sustain the change, to keep this change happening, to keep people focused on the new ways of working uh, by developing, I don't know, like a reward scheme or showing the outcomes as well of what's happening, like the patient's uh, best interest showing that patient evaluation the outcomes are on target those sort of things uh, and just get the team motivated about it and show them what's going well to keep them on top of it and just celebrating the success of the change basically 
And then from this, you learn, you learn from practice, you learn that change is needed, you learn that actually change is okay, your colleagues will hopefully feel comfortable with change and think actually, yeah, this is okay. And they might be open to it uh, a bit more in the future as well, if anything else is needed. And sometimes you don't need a change model. Like this is very, very like academic, very clinical sort of talk. Actually, I've created change out there without doing any of those steps. I've basically just shared my passion and my love for something and people have just followed, if that makes sense. So for example, for the GPN SNN, I am actually wearing the t-shirt today because I was just doing some videos and stuff for them. Uh, so through that, we are dispelling the myths of becoming a general practice nurse, what a general practice nurse does. A lot of people are sort of set back in the day where they think that it's, a job that you retire to, you can't be a general practice nurse as a newly qualified nurse. I was a newly qualified nurse, I went straight into GP to prove that actually it can be done. Um, and we do that as part of the GPN SNN. We visit universities, we do talks, uh, we promote things on social media, and we just share the buzz and love for all things general practice nursing. And then that has a knock-on knock effect or a ripple effect. Uh, and people like to get involved. People like to see positivity. People like to see the passion and the love for something that you do. And then they think, oh, okay, this isn't too bad. And then it knocks on, has that knock-on effect, like I was talking about, the ripple effect. Uh, and people sort of follow it and people think okay maybe I should be a general practice nurse and then we get more people into general practice and this isn't a, a, a scheme or a ploy or anything like that I don't get paid to do that I don't get told what to do it's just happened naturally because I'm passionate about my job and the people I work with are passionate about their jobs we're passionate about sharing everything we do and we love and it just happens naturally and me personally I think that is one of the best things that you can do to implement change by just being you, be yourself, be real, share your passion, share your joy, share your love, just sell it without selling it, if that makes sense, just by being yourself and everything will just fall into place naturally. And that's just a really good tip, I think, for if you want widespread change, uh, not clinical change if that makes sense if you want widespread change social media is a really really good tool to use make the most of it share your passion share resources stuff like that share what you're doing take pictures take videos share it out there on social media in facebook groups on twitter on instagram share it so the world can see don't be shy about your achievements don't be shy about what you're doing be proud share your passion because it is the biggest thing to create change out there i promise you you just got to share it and watch the ripple effect. However, going back to clinical change, if you want to make changes in your workplace, uh, then just literally don't worry about, I know I've gone through the change models and stuff, and that's, you know, the, the sort of side of it I wanted to show because that's what the books say and things like that. But you know what? If you just write down on a bit of A4 piece of paper, what your change, what you want it to be, why do you want this change to happen, what's going wrong, what's bad about it, what could be done right, what's good about it, how is it going to benefit your colleagues, how is it going to benefit the patients, is there a money side to it and funding and things like that, have everything onto a sheet of paper, go to your management, go to your person in charge and say, do you know what, I've noticed this, I've noticed that, do you think we could do this, could do that, this is why it's needed, it's going to save money, it's going to better patient outcomes and blah blah blah, what do you think? smash it do you know what smash it if you can do this guys just do it share your passion and show your passion as well that's the other thing show your passion about the change you want to happen like i've just spoke about to your manager to your colleagues drip feed that in there and they will all come round eventually but as long as you can show because management is always about money and patient outcomes if you can hit those two targets and show that you're going to meet them you're going to improve patient outcomes patient safety make your colleagues happier and save money you're onto a winner they can't say no to that <laughs> As you can see, I'm really passionate about change because change is needed. Change is absolutely needed in our NHS every single day, every single place. There's always good ways of doing things. However, you don't want to reinvent the wheel. If there's something already out there that's working really, really well, you can adapt it to your clinical place as well. And this is why Facebook groups, Twitter, social media, things like that. If you're in a newsletter for your trust, have a look at that. See what's going on in other areas because sometimes someone's already done something. So you just implement it to where you are, show them how it's working, show them the evidence that's already out there and just do it. 
And just on that note, so if you haven't already, go and have a look at the Fab Academy website because that's where we share best practice. That's where we share what amazing things are happening out there in our NHS, in healthcare, private sectors, whatever, what's going well, what people have already implemented and it's working well. It's been amazing changes for them. So have a look at that. Have a look at what people are doing in other areas. Can you implement that change to you? Is it feasible? Will it work well in your trust? Is it going to make things better? Have a look at the website. I'm going to put the links below because that is a great place to share. Or if you've done something, if you've already implemented change, if you've already met those targets and done amazing, go and input it onto the Fab Academy website because they want to know about it and they want to share your achievements and they want everyone else to see those so that they can implement it. The ripple effect. I'm telling you guys, this is the best thing ever. Why am I so excited about this? I don't know. I just love it. I'm sorry, guys. I just love it. So I think that's everything I can think of on change management. If I've missed anything out, let me know in the comments and I will try and do something else, maybe. But I just want you to take away from this. If you think something needs changing and it's not working well in your practice or something we do better, first thing you want to do, do your research, have a look around. Has something already been done out there that you can re that you don't have to reinvent, that you can bring into your practice? Do that. Two, is the change that you want to happen, is it going to be beneficial to your patients? And is it going to save money? Is it going to save time? Is it going to be a better way of working? tick share your passion share 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 it share it everywhere you can do it now go and lastly don't be scared don't be scared if you've got this great idea there's nothing else out, li out there like it don't be scared to go for it don't be scared to approach your management team don't be scared to approach the chief executives if it needs to be that high just go for it you know your idea could be a massive thing for our nhs or for your your trust that you're working at whichever profession you're in it could be massive it could make a massive difference to someone's life so that's why you need to go for it what's the worst that's going to happen they look at it and go mm, i don't think that's going to work that's the worst that's going to happen then you go okay and then we'll just go back gather more evidence go back again maybe in a month or something give them time to settle then go back and show them some more evidence and maybe they'll say yes next time just never give up so that is it from me if you have any more videos you would like me to do comment below i will do them for you if obviously i know about it uh but yeah let me know in the comments if you need anything and i shall see you all next time don't forget to be a change agent <laughs>